Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, please like, subscribe, share. Uh, we have a pretty cool take of uh, the you know the market, uh, the general market, uh, the overall aspect of sentiment, and I think it's a very unbiased, honest opinion of what I believe the market is going to be do next. I mean, next, literally next, uh, the next trading day, not two, three months down the line, not a year from now, but just literally uh, getting prepared uh, for the next session. Before we go on, just uh, one last. Uh, reminder, if you are uh, planning to join us, uh, whether it's tomorrow or next week, uh, this Saturday, uh, this Saturday from 10 o'clock uh, in the morning at 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, we're going to be doing a virtual uh, summit in the live room uh, hosted by our own uh, Kenyon. Uh, I will be in the panel uh, for all you guys who know our boy Kane, Matt, Larry, you have two equity, you have two equity guys, you have two option guys. Uh, a rapid fire uh, participation from the audience, all that good stuff about how we trade pivots, different views, whether it's bounces, whether it's rejections, whether it's macro pivots, where it's micro pivots, where it's sneaky pivots, all these things you hear me talk about. So it'll be really, really cool. It's going to be very, very fun. Instead of me sitting there doing a whole, well, this is a pivot that takes out supply, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we want to make sure it's fun, enjoyable for everybody because the last thing I want to do is sit there for two hours talking about pivots, which I do. Uh, Monday through Friday for six hours, literally speaking, six hours a day. Uh, so if you are coming aboard, uh, this is a very cool, neat event, and it will be uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern time, and it's open to all uh, traders for Accents Traders. So hopefully you guys will join us. I look forward to working uh, with all you new folks. So let's talk about today. So last night uh, on the video, uh, we talked about how the Qs... Uh, failed to take out last week's highs, and we started tightening up channels. And we have tightening up channels. That mean, it looks like it's one of those scenarios that combine that with not taking out the previous, you know, previous week's high. Usually, what happens is a little bit of an exhaustion effect. Um, so, if you guys remember on yesterday's video, we were talking about how the semiconductors were weak and they started to to break down. You know, your names uh, like AMAT, for example, names like Nvidia. And you can see how they, they, they all follow through to downside. Uh, the, 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 the problem was with today's session was um, you had ADP numbers come out. You had um, a revised uh, revised consensus, which the private sector basically increased and doubled its consensus. So you had some pretty nasty selling here uh, at the open. If you look at the 60-minute view, and not just on the queues, if you look at the 60-minute view on pretty much uh, every stock, you'll see exactly the same thing. Amazon, right? These are these are pretty nasty candles uh, at the open. And when you when you woke up this morning, you saw the AB, uh, ADP data, which uh, is is deemed you know really I don't want to say not reliable, but a lot of people believe it's a little bit exaggerated. It's not exactly uh, the same thing as the potential June payroll that's going to be out tomorrow morning. Again, more data. Uh, and that's going to set the tone, but it, it did spook the market today. Uh, you could quite see there were a lot of uh, really aggressive selling at the open. But the problem is we're in a bull market, right? And you know, my you know, when I talk about being prepared on both sides of the market, and we talked about specifically like a name like Micron, right? Everything gapped down aggressively, and the problem with this gap down, especially in a bull market, is everything gapped into rising support. So it's not like you had a plethora of 6,000 stocks to choose from on the short side. And when you have stocks trading into support, and there's a very, very important thing uh, to remember as a trader, never shorten a hole. So for example, if a bull market, the last thing you want to do is short the open uh, because that's when you'll get really manhandled. And that's exactly what happened. You know, After the open selling, you had your kind of capitulation move uh, after 10 o'clock, and you can see how the queues, uh, they held rising support. And you're going to see that with a lot of charts today. It doesn't make a difference what you 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 what symbol you punch up you're gonna see exactly the same thing they opened that support and they just basically started grinding back the whole day which basically left us uh more watching than anything else but at least the good part of it is and this is where i say all the time some days you have to take a little bit of a step back to kind of watch the action to get more data for the next day and today was kind of one of those days and you know 
I tried to balance a, a couple of names today. Um, I tried to balance Tesla twice today, right? Uh, I bounced it the first time and went up like 20, 30 cents to use break even as my stop, got stopped out. Tried to buy a bounce it the second time, went, you know, rally, excuse me, the first time went up like 40, 50 cents, nothing, right? Came back in, stopped me out, break even. The second time I did it again, it started bouncing 20, 30, 40 cents, nothing big, stopped that even. So I figured, hey, you know what? If this thing can't go up, it must go down. And Tesla actually gave us a pretty good, uh, pretty good short to the downside, uh, taking down uh, two days worth of buying in the same little tight channel. But again, it was only a couple of bucks and I attempted to uh, bounce square as well, right? Uh, nice little trade on, sh on the short side on, on Tesla, but you know, nice little, you know, had a really big move on square and it came back into its breakout price today. And I actually bounced it off the 60 minute view and it just, just like everything else, I tried to bounce it here and then everything else just, just, just didn't bounce. So I wound up taking a dollar loss on it, but the, it really did show to me, you know, how, how, how sometimes, you know, these names will not hold support, especially if the market goes through an exhaustion cycle. So after that, after, you know, after the trades with Tesla, you know, I, I pretty much had a nothing burger uh, all day uh, and the loss with Square. So I kind of just watched more than anything. Uh, but I did get some good data, and that's the most important part uh, going into tomorrow's sessions. And the one thing you guys will really remember, especially new traders, the day-to-day -day means nothing, right? It, it means nothing. The market's open. It, it means nothing. It, whether you're up a little bit, down a little bit, or flat, it's the same thing. What you're waiting for and buying time and kind of you know absorbing and embracing the data is what happens next. So if you can't get going on a very specific day, just it's okay, right? Just leave it alone. And the next day will be something. And, and the data we got today uh, was pretty, you know, was was pretty good information going tomorrow. At least now we have the cues needs to reclaim the five-day moving average and write down these levels, guys. Uh, for the for the for the bulls to start building back up, the cues are going to have to reclaim 368. 368 is also a five-day. The five-day is the shortest-term sentiment. And if the bulls can reclaim the, the five-day of 368 and start building higher. Yeah, we're going to start going back higher. However, there's a flip side to this as well. Uh, today, you saw the Q's test successfully, the 10-day moving average. You've been watching this video for a while. You kind of know that the 10-day moving average is the birth of the trade, just the same way uh, the 10-day moving average here was lost. We had a really, really good pivot to the downside. Well, it's the same thing, right? So you have 368 to the upside, and you have roughly 364.5 to the downside. In between, you're going to get a lot of chops, so be careful out there until one side or the another uh, occurs, which is me uh, very, very important. And we do have uh, a jobs number uh, or jobs payroll number data that the market likes. Can you just keep an eye on that 368 to the upside and 364 and a half uh, to the downside. And you'll see the same similarities to a lot of names. You saw uh, Tesla today didn't quite get down, which is kind of a little disappointing. I really thought we were gonna get down at least uh, to the five day moving average on the back test, which it didn't get there. But you got to look at Tesla. It mirrored exactly like everything else. You know, he came back in and just started grinding, grinding, grinding. You know, it, was, it closed. Uh, it closed within what? It claimed three, four, three, three, four dollars away from the lows. So we're kind of a little bit of a rock and a hard place going into tomorrow's session, uh, just because uh, we need these payroll numbers to you know to either reclaim the five day on the on the queues or re or start damaging down the ten day on the queues to us to get a little bit more. Um, you know, a little bit more clarity what happens next. But there are some names. That, you know, there's definitely some names uh, to definitely keep an eye out for tomorrow. Uh, you know, you had a big potential setup in Microsoft if the market rallies tomorrow. And that's a very, very important name because if Microsoft rallies, it's probably going to pull up the cues as well. As you can see here, it's now sitting in a four-day cycle. Tomorrow will be five. That means it's one full week of distribution. If you can see here, you know, Microsoft definitely stood out today. There was an upgrade today, I believe there was an upgrade today. So if Microsoft could finally start getting above this channel and there's good payroll numbers, who knows? I mean, the last time we traded Microsoft out of a channel, this damn thing here is a 10 day, right? The last damn thing really exploded. So let's watch this. This is tomorrow will be day five, a full week of distribution. And if uh, Microsoft can get above this channel here, who knows? You know, maybe we get a big, big run uh, there as well. Uh, some other names I definitely want to watch. Let me give you guys a couple of names to watch uh, for tomorrow. Let me see what I can give you guys. Like, look at Zoom for the downside, right? So Zoom had its moment in the sun, uh, had its moment in the sun uh, during the COVID, right? Everybody was trade. Well, everybody was working from home and Zoom was big. And then all of a sudden, Microsoft Teams came and Citrix and this one and that one. And 
you know, I use Zoom. I, we use Zoom in the, in the webinar. I like Zoom. I think it's very, uh, it's intuitive, it's user-friendly. I think it's a very, very cool platform. It's not even expensive anymore. Uh, like a year ago, year and a half ago, I was paying, what was it? I was paying like 250 for 500, right? For 500 attendees. And one day, like a year ago, you know, they, they dropped down the price. I didn't even ask for it. They dropped down the price to like 105 bucks a month. So, you know, look, the business model, the business itself is great. Uh, but you know, the stock is not appreciating. The stock is, hasn't appreciated in a long time. And today the stock closed below the 50 day moving average. So if it's bad payroll numbers, keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on Zoom. If this thing starts losing, it confirms the 50 day. This thing's going to go lower. Same thing with Lululemon. And, and again, don't judge me. Lululemon now is my favorite company. I used to make fun of it, but my wife one day bought me uh, slacks. She bought me two pairs of slacks. She bought me shirts. And I was like, this is like the most comfortable thing I have a war and now I'm starting to accumulate uh, after I lost my 40 pounds, of course, I'm starting to accumulate a new wardrobe because I, nothing, nothing that I have uh, fits me anymore. But if Lulu, yeah, to keep an eye on Lulu, if, you know, if Lulu starts losing uh, today's channel, maybe this thing starts, you know, getting hit as well, but uh, great, great product. A very, very addicting for all you guys who used to make fun of it and you got your first pair of Lulu shorts, a Lulu shirt or, or, or the pants. I'm telling you, it's like wearing sweatpants. It's, it's absolutely uh, phenomenal. So Lulu, I'm watching to the downside. I'm watching uh, Zoom to the downside. I'm watching Microsoft to the upside. Uh, we have our ranges in the queues. You know, I kind of like to see what NVIDIA does. Uh, I, I like the fact that NVIDIA today had a really nice bounce. I uh, held support and not only reclaimed the five, it held, uh, it reclaimed the, uh, the 10 days. Well, hey, if the market's good, again, we have, you know, we have plenty of really good names to the upside. And if Tesla could wake up, NVIDIA could wake up, Microsoft could wake up. So we have some value. But again, like I say, every single day, make sure that you are prepared on both sides because the one thing you can't control, right? You, you can control your game plan, but you can't control stocks confirming. So tomorrow, you know, the payroll numbers will come in. We'll see how the market um, embraces them or not embrace them. But again, the most important part is we'll be prepared on both sides. And once again, guys, if you are planning to join us, uh, again, PS60 Theory is pretty cool. We're the only ones on the planet who trade this way. Uh, there might be some clones you know, trying to, um, you know, show how the PS60 theory works. They're kind of in the PS phase of their career and not exactly the PS60, but hey, God bless them all. I wish everybody the best of luck. So if you are looking to join us uh, and you are, uh, you know, you are excited about uh, the virtual summit on Saturday, it's a perfect time to take advantage. Guys, have a great night. God bless. And I'll see a lot of you guys um, tomorrow. Take care, guys. Have a great day.